the Newton Raphson method. So we will describe the method with some visualizations. We'll do some notes on the implementation and then give an example to finalize everything. Description of the method. So we start with a function f of x and I have plotted that here with this red line and clearly there's a root here somewhere and then we want to refine that. So the first thing we'll do is make a very good guess. And so we'll call this guess x1. And of course, when as we refine that, that'll become x2, x3, x4 as we iterate through this algorithm. So we make a guess, we want this as good as possible. At that point, we will evaluate the function at the point where we've guessed that the root is. Then we also know the derivative of that function, so we can calculate the slope at that point. And essentially we can extrapolate that down and figure out where that line crosses the x-axis. And that's going to become our guess at the next root. So let's dig into how we do that. So we start with the equation of a line. And so we have its slope and the slope will be the derivative of the function at x1. And the rest of the equation of the line, we have y minus some y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we need a slope and we need some point x1, y1. Well, we have that first point. We have that first guess at the root and we've evaluated the function. So our x1 is just x1 and our y1 is the function value at x1. So of course our y is just the function at any x and our x is just x. Next step. We want to find out where that line crosses the x-axis, so where y equals zero. So we're setting the y term equal to zero, and then we want to solve for x, which now we're labeling as x2, meaning that's the guess at the root for our second iteration. So if we solve this equation for x2, we end up here. And what we really have derived is our update equation, if you will, how we go from one root to the next. So we have our first guess at the root, and we subtract from that the function divided by its derivative evaluated at this guess for the root. That gives us the position for the second root and we start all over again. We will evaluate the function and probably its derivative at the second point. That gives us a line and we can figure out where that line crosses the x-axis. And that becomes our next guess at a root. We'll evaluate the function at that new point. And this continues, evaluate the function, get the next, get the next, get the next. And we will slowly close in onto where that root is. And in this case, we've converged to five iterations. Now, if we need six digits of precision, that might go a dozen or so iterations. Notes on implementation. So here's a block diagram of the algorithm and you can see it's quite simple. So on paper, we need our function and its derivative, or actually we just need the function divided by its derivative. So if we have an analytical expression for this, that is sufficient. The next thing we need to know, we need to know before entering the algorithm is our initial guess. Maybe this comes from knowledge of the physics of the problem. Maybe we've plotted it and we have sort of some sort of rough guess, but somehow we've come up with an initial guess that we are calling x1. Now we're ready to enter the algorithm. The first thing we'll do is we'll calculate how much to adjust our position. So we'll call that delta x sub i, and that's just the function evaluated at the current guess at the root divided by the derivative of the function evaluated at the current guess at the root. So this tells us how much we need to change our current guess at the root. We then update the guess for our root. So the guess for the next iteration equals the guess of the previous iteration minus this delta term that we've just calculated, how much we need to adjust x sub i to get to x sub i plus one. Now the reason we've broken it up this way and we've calculated delta x separately is this is what we'll check against our tolerance that we've defined. So we look at the magnitude of this, we take the absolute value and we check if that falls below some tolerance that we've defined. And if it doesn't, we keep repeating that until those steps, those delta x's become small enough that they fall below the tolerance. 
and then we're done. And we found our route to this given degree of tolerance. This method is very fast, but it can have poor or unstable convergence properties. And this happens when the function is very nonlinear. And there's a few cases. Let's say we have a function that looks something like this. And you know maybe our first guess is right here. The slope will project us way over here. We come down, now the slope projects us way over here. We come up, projects way over here, and it's going unstable because we have this very nonlinear function. Now, if we could make a better guess that's closer to the root, this might perhaps converge. And we can look at other shape functions, which the projection, because of the nonlinear curve, and we're right, estimating as linear, our next guesses are just way off and it can go unstable. If we have you know, multiple roots, we could jump to the other side of a root and converge to the incorrect root. So there's all kinds of things that can happen. Let's remind ourselves how to handle multiple roots for this method. So in our update equation, where we refine our guess at the root, we are dividing by the derivative of the function. We know that if we have a multiple root, double root, triple root, quadruple root, the derivative goes to zero at the root. And so we are dividing by zero and that causes numerical instabilities. And so when that happens, we define an auxiliary function. And we define an auxiliary function u of x that is equal to the function divided by its derivative. So if we take that auxiliary function and perform root finding on it, we will get the answer. So our update equation, we just replace u with f. We have u divided by the derivative of u. But remember, u itself is f divided by its derivative. So we have some bunch of terms mixing here and we'll have the, the derivative of a derivative. So we know we have a second order derivative. Working through the math, this is where we end up. This is our update equation completely in terms of f. Now, if you can derive u and u prime on paper, derive u divided by u prime and just use that for your update equation. But sometimes it's useful to see it in terms of f, its first derivative and its second derivative. Let's end our discussion before the example just with some notes about the newton raphson method. This doesn't require bounds, right? We don't have a lower and upper bound. We just have an initial guess, a single initial guess. Now that initial guess has to be a good one, especially if that function is very nonlinear or if it has multiple roots and you know peaks and valleys, because we've seen how our when we project with a line that we can jump way far away from where the root is. So our initial guess needs to be pretty good, especially when that function's not well behaved. It requires our function and its derivative or the function divided by its derivative to be analytical. We need an analytical equation to feed into this algorithm. This algorithm does converge extremely fast, especially for functions that are near linear. And that's because we're approximating where the next one is with a straight line. So the more the function looks like a straight line, the better that refinement is in our calculations for the root. And we've also mentioned that this is vulnerable to instabilities. This happens when our function is very nonlinear and we're approximating this with a linear function. So clearly that can lead to instabilities. If there's multiple roots, Really because of the instabilities, we could project way over to where there's another root and converge to the wrong root entirely. The last thing I'll leave you with is that Newton's method is not the same as the newton raphson method. We haven't even discussed the Newton's method yet. That comes up in optimization. And what you'll see is that's a little tweak of the newton raphson method. So they're closely related, but the newton raphson method is for root finding and Newton's method is for optimization. And we'll see that later in the course. Let's work through an example. Now this will be one where we have a known answer. So our function, let it be sine of x. Let's find the root of f of x in the proximity of x equal to four. So the first thing we need to do is derive an analytical expression for the function divided by its derivative. And our function is sine x. So function sine x, our refinement will be f over 
the f prime, so it's a function over its derivative. Well, the function is sine of x, and the derivative is the derivative of sine x. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. Sine x divided by cosine x is tan x. So given that, our update equation that will refine the, our guess at the root is the old root minus the tangent of our old root. And that'll give us our guess for the new root. Let's put this in terms of MATLAB code. So here's our initial guess, x equal to four. We'll define some kind of tolerance, uh, 10 to the minus six. So we want you know, four or five digits of precision here. Dx, this is our refinement. At first, I'm gonna set that to infinity because we're going to use a while loop to converge. And while this error is greater than tolerance, do all this stuff in here. So I'm gonna set it to infinity to begin with, so it goes into that loop. Well, the first thing we do is we calculate our refinement dx, which is just tan of our current guess at the root, and then we update our root. And yes, we could say xr equals xr minus tan xr, but then we'd have to recalculate tan xr for the condition in the while loop. So I like to break it up like this, where we calculate the delta separate from the update of the root. It's very fast, and we have this delta term to look for convergence. And in this particular case, we converge to 3.1416 after just four iterations. So that's incredibly fast. Now, this is a rather nonlinear function, but we had a good enough guess to start with that this still worked. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.